Okay, on to stage two. <coughs> Pardon me. I've just come from the doctors, the surgeons, and uh, I no longer wear this. I have to be careful, but I'm anxious to get going on this, get it drilled and get it painted um, before it gets too cold to be out here. So right now I'm in my woodworking shop and uh, I can just do a, a little pan around. hope I don't make anybody too dizzy. Um, it's quite the old barn. I think it was a horse barn and we've managed to get it uh, usable for a shop for me but it's uh, it is what it is. What can I say? Okay so I've got this, uh, where are we? Let me get that down a bit. Okay, this is a automatic center punch and I shall attempt to uh, put marks where I want the holes to be drilled. Now I won't be finished with this. Okay, that's... Nope, this is... Yes, that is the one board. Uh, let me just get it to refresh my memory. This is the board. Okay, and then there is the input switch. Okay, um, and then we have all these, what have we got, a pilot light, I haven't got a, an LED to fit in there so I'll be fiddling around with that. These are the little switches that will go there. Okay, and then I have a switch. Yeah, these are the speaker switches. I'm hoping that I'll mark these anyhow. And then the uh, uh, okay, I'm getting confused here. Power in. Oh, that's the. Uh, Preamp out and the power in. Isn't this exciting? Actually, it is for me. And these are. Okay, I didn't circle all of these things, so I'm getting myself confused. These are the speaker. Output speaker. And then I've got all of these uh, RCA jacks to go. Now what I haven't got yet is some kind of a bracket to hold the two preamp boards. And so I can't take this off. Now I have no idea how it's going to come off. What I'm going to do after I drill it is sand it. Sorry, I will soak it in water and see if that loosens it. I have my feelings that it won't. So at any rate, um, yeah, my two boards, preamp, 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 has got to be mounted here somewhere to take the input from the RCA jacks to there 
and that because there's a, a fair depth to this case, um, this should be able to mount that way. I was going to mount them on the bottom, which would be there, but um, it, I like this to be one complete assembly. And the only thing uh, off of this will be the inputs, the three inputs on the back panel that come up to the input switch, and then the speaker switches and the output from the amplifier and then the input from the power amplifier. So at any rate, we shall see what that does. Okay, so now it's ready to be uh, drilled and I'll set up the, uh, the drill and be right back. Okay, I've switched uh, bits. Let me just take them right up. Anyway. So it doesn't move. And uh, I've got the tone control board here. clean so let's just see what we get here whether I've got a big enough hole whoops that scared me for a minute uh, not quite not quite let's uh, change that bit out Better to have to drill it twice than to make the hole too big and ruin your. So what are we looking at? Nine twenty seconds. No. Well, let's see. seems unbelievable. It's just volume. Volume. No, okay. I'm a little too optimistic. My drills 
in my center punch. They're not exactly where I wanted them, so we shall over drill the sides. Give me a little slop with which to I don't need much. too much slop in there. Okay, that's fine, I just have to clean it up. And I don't think I'll bore everybody with drilling all the other holes. I'll just go ahead and do that off camera. I have to, uh, let me get that out. All of these are all RCA jacks, and yes, that's a lot. <laughs> and these are all switches. Oh, and I have to drill the switch out for there. But um, I think it's time for lunch, you know, honestly. Getting hungry. So I'll do that and clean up the other side and come back and then we'll see whether I can get this off. No, that's not quite true. I've got to make some brackets, some L brackets for that. So we'll see how that works out. See you in a bit. Good morning. I am back. As you might be able to see, I've got most everything wired up on this panel. Um, all the uh, input jacks are there, all the switches are there. No, um, there are two, four input jacks missing because I ran out <laughs> of jacks. And I've got two, uh, no sorry, four on the old um, shop uh, power amp or amp testing and uh, I will steal them. Uh, unfortunately I don't want to lose the uh, use of that bench amp until absolutely I must. Uh, so what I'm going to do is steal the uh, power amps and the power supply for the power amps to go in the back. Um, in the back of this will go more jacks and the power amps will be there with heat sinks on them. Um, the power, actual power supply will go into the old uh, bench amp case and uh, it has to be uh, a little bit remote from this because uh, in the present situation if I have the uh, uh, power supply within six inches it injects a lot of hum especially into the uh, magnetic uh, uh, preamp. Anyhow, um, I have this hooked up into my uh, tape monitor loop on the old test amp, whereas the signal is being fed into these jacks here, which are, go into the switch and they are the auxiliary, front panel auxiliary. And then this uh, is going back into the tape in of the monitor loop there and these are the jacks for pre-out and they'll also be hardwired over into the uh, uh, power amp at any rate. So as recommended by the maker of this board, uh, Elliott Sound Products and others, I've hooked up a uh, 100 ohm resistor to each the plus and the minus 15 volt leads and these the blue the black and the red go to the appropriate jacks on my uh, uh, shelf mounted uh, regulated power supply so if anything is nasty with it then these things should overheat and hopefully save what's on the board so uh, <laughs> here goes nothing I guess 
Let me tighten that up. All right, uh, what do we need? We need the power supply. Okay, the uh, LED, front panel LED, you can't really see it too well. It's uh, because the front of the board is down there. I see no signs of magic smoke or anything else. Okay, I've got a CD queued up. Now, um, unfortunately, in my last video, I uh, uh, played two long uh, clips of uh, a favorite old album of mine by Burt Kempfert. Uh, that album is approximately 60 years old and I would have thought nobody would care um, if uh, I play a clip from it. Uh, however, uh, it, the, the algorithms uh, uh, gave me a copyright infringement notification. However, the owners of the rights to this allowed me to use what I had without it being a strike, which was very good of them. Um, I'm not sure how um, other people post videos of an entire song lifted from an album or a CD or a tape and they get no copyright warning or strikes. I don't know whether it's what they call fair usage notification. I don't know. It's very unclear to me. All right, and another thing is uh, my experiment with my new camera um, didn't go too well. The segment before this one was filmed with, with that. I have to take it off the computer and, of course, put them all together. But in the meantime, I'm back to using my camcorder, which has always worked well. Uh, the nicest thing about it is it's got on this remote um, a start stop, start to record and stop record button on it. It's also got zoom, all on a handy little device. Now, the reason why I wanted to stop using it is it's a bit clunky. It is a camcorder, and even though it's a, a palm held camcorder. It weighs a bit and it's difficult to get it mounted in one spot and it also saves the video format in something that I don't know whether is a JVC's format or whatever but it has to be converted to MP4 uh, or MP4 uh, whatever um, in order for me to process it and to get it put together and load it up. So in the meantime I have uh, I do have a, a bit of software in the computer that's allowed me to uh, uh, record from my webcam that's mounted right up above there. However, uh, this webcam, new webcam, gives an extremely good picture at 2K, uh, whereas my software gives me um, a limitation of 720 uh, because I'm using the free version. Uh, now, I've gone in, if I'm going to have to pay for something, I wanted to check and see what my best value was going to be. Um, and it's confusing to the extreme. Uh, the software that I'm using actually works the best. It has a zoom on it, and it has a, a flip situation because this webcam is sort of mounted upside down and backwards. Um, it makes it confusing for me to set up what's going on around here. Uh, all the other software, um, their, their free version or their test version gives me no indication of, of how well it's going to work for the paid version. Only one offered a seven-day free trial and I, I don't know, it's gotten mixed up in there so I'm really totally confused. Uh, I'd like to ask any uh, video watchers of mine, uh, if you use uh, a video recording software for use for posting YouTube videos uh, and it works for you and it's not too expensive and does all the things that's, that's necessary for this kind of video, videography, uh, please let me know in a comment uh, and I can look it up. Um, the other problem I had was the sound from the built-in mic 
because basically it's a webcam camera and would be mounted on top of your monitor and within about, I don't know, a foot of your face so the pickup for the mic would be adequate. But for this, um, as you might have noticed, it, the sound is very weak as opposed to the camcorder which has a very good mic uh, and picks up all the way across the room quite well. Uh, I have a, uh, well, I will have to buy a lavalier mic to wear on me to pick up my voice better, which might be what I would have to do. But I had a thought, uh, if I can't get a software that's going to work for Zoom, uh, and quite a few of them don't seem to have any Zoom facility, which I would need, um, the camera doesn't have an a optical Zoom, it all requires the software. Uh, I thought, I have an old um, lamp, this kind of lamp that I'm not using and I thought okay why don't I pull the head off of that and pull the wiring out and make a bracket for the cam uh, sorry the webcam and then I could mount it up here and pull it down and position it wherever I wanted it for close-up which would mean I wouldn't need the zoom particularly so uh, <laughs> uh, that's a possibility I've got like four or five of these uh, um, what do you call it, lamps, desk lamps, um, articulated lamps, and I could dedicate the one for this purpose, so I may end up doing that. At any rate, let's move along. Uh, this is still live, and that's working. So what I've done is hook it into the tape monitor loop on the old amp, and I've got the CD uh, queued up somewhere, and I'll just press play. Then okay. With this illusion deep in your eye. And that's about all I can do. I can't demonstrate that. Uh, it, I can demonstrate that the switching is working, the input and output jacks are working, the uh, board is working, and I have tested it. Uh, previously, actually, I did power it up, and the bass, treble, and balance, and volume are all working as they should be. So, this part is fine. Now, I still have yet... Let me power this off so I don't short anything. I still have these two boards to mount, and I've been fretting over how to mount them. I really wanted as much on this I don't know whether we want this tighter or no. Um, the, I want the boards mounted on here, and I was looking for um, 90 degree mounting studs, and I used to have them, and I can't find anything anymore. They have to be pretty small. They can't be regular brackets that you get at a, a, a home hardware or whatever. But uh, I've come up with an idea. Whereas if I put this uh, mounting stud through this ground loop and then solder the negative to the other uh, stud here for uh, common or negative or ground, um, I can mount it right like that. And I haven't done it, but I think it'll be relatively stable. And the second thing would be for this preamp, which is for the ceramic, would be mounted the same. Um, when it goes in the case, I can devise something that will sit on the bottom that will clamp the back end of the boards, hopefully. But as long as it's not flopping around, once it's inside the case, I think it probably should be stable enough. That way, there's virtually no lead length to the uh, from the input jacks to the input of the preamp and the output of the preamp going over to this switch get that out of the way is very small there's the output left uh, left and right that'll just go over 
there and the same with that. Um, power supply will come in there so I have to run leads and uh, I'll be using different wire. This is, uh, I don't know what gauge it is, it's probably about 22 gauge and it's uh, solid wire which means I can twist it and flex it and position it in a way where it will stay and I like that situation. Um, the other wire I have has got a Teflon coating and I will use that for the power supply because it will come off and uh, it's thicker probably 20 gauge I don't know exactly I'll have to check and it will go to the back panel where the uh, power supply leads will come in and it will also go from this over here somewhere woven through to get to the power for these two boards here and that's where it is so far um, I'm pleased that this part works I'll test it again once I can get those in and uh, then there's nothing more to do except uh, take the old amp apart completely um, and mount the uh, 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 power packages power amplifier packages with heat sinks to the back panel and then uh, that will be that and it will be ready to go in. Um, my power supply, well, okay, I've got the uh, regulator and I didn't realize that the regulator, I didn't look at it really, the regulator is not just the regulator, it's the entire rectifier and filtering uh, and now this will be the plus and minus 15 for the uh, preamp itself, all sections of the preamp, whereas the big power supply will be, has its own power supply in its original case and it will come in through leads. I've got the leads here, these ones will come in to the back, this set will come into the back and I'll need six, right now there's nine on there so I'll remove three. So I've got three for the um, power amp, power supply, and three for the uh, preamp. And the other three I'll just remove, and that'll be that. Uh, the other end of it, where did I put them? Oh, there it is. Uh, I will have to extend these wires because, like I say, the uh, power uh, supply needs to be more than a foot away so I'll just put it whatever okay so this part runs I hope this was of some interest to people um, I know that this isn't old radios and this isn't turntables uh, but uh, it might be it certainly is an interest to me uh, I've wanted the definitive bench amp uh, for myself for quite some time when I discovered the limitations uh, uh, of the one I use now. In actuality, just a sort of historical fact, the um, bass treble balance volume control board, um, I actually made this at a very early excursion into PC board manufacturing for me, which I'm not very good at. Back in, I hate to tell you, the 80s, based on a, a schematic I got from a, a Canadian um, electronics magazine and I built it because my partner and I used to run dances providing the music for disco nights. Anybody old enough to remember disco nights? Um, at various venues uh, around the Toronto uh, suburban area of which we lived. And uh, once that was over um, I just left all the parts sitting wherever in boxes and when I wanted to build this amp I, I took it apart and uh, put them into this and this amp has worked good, it, it produces good sound uh, um, it's probably 25 watts per channel which is way more than what's necessary for test but sometimes when I'm in here working I like to put some music on and wail away um, I can move that to another song and 
turn it back on. Okay. This is one of my favorite albums. Okay, again, I can't uh, I can't play any part of it. But it is uh, an album recorded by James Darren, who unfortunately and very sadly passed away recently, um, which has upset me a lot because uh, I love his voice. And he's, he's the uh, crooner, like a Frank Sinatra type. And he did a stint on uh, Star Trek uh, Deep Space Nine, where he played a holographic singer. And it was very uh, endearing to me, and I sort of fell in love with the songs he was uh, singing. And he eventually made an album uh, with all the songs that he used uh, during the filming of that uh, series. And, uh, so I bought it, and uh, I play it here in the shop. Makes me happy and sad at the same time. At any rate, enough of that. Okay, I shall turn this off and bid everybody a good afternoon and uh, thanks for watching, those who watch.